and PGA Tour Communications put this out by his social media. This is the first time in FedEx Cup playoff history that the top three players in the FedEx Cup standings entering the Tour Championship are also the top three players in the official World Golf Ranking, one through three, Dustin Johnson, John Rahm, and Justin Thomas. So we have had things that have transpired since the restart that, that make you think that how can it get better each week? Well, yesterday, I hope that wasn't the crescendo. I don't. Because they've got another week, and then obviously then we got the second major of the year, but let's start with John Rahm. Because what he did on the weekend, look, he opened with 75. He shot 66-64. What happened Saturday says what about him in 2020? This is the new John Rahm. Mm -hmm. and this is the guy that we all saw the physical capabilities of. I mean, he was nine under on his last uh, 27 holes. So you look at that, he was really 10 under because he had a penalty stroke. But John Rahm and what he is, he's always had the physical tools. Beautiful high ball flight, very long off the tee and very accurate. He's got a complete game, no holes in his game. The only hole was John Rahm himself. Mm. And I tell you what, we saw him run hot and it affect his play over the years. How did he learn from it? He's young. John Rahm made that mistake on Saturday. I mean, you go back and you look, he picked up his ball. But even he, I mean, he recognized that and he said, look, I've got to move on past this. I can't let this keep affecting me. And I think that's the transformation we've seen in John Rahm. And that's the maturity. That's the ability to learn quickly. And really now there's nothing holding him back. When you can overcome adversity like that and it not affect you and it say, look, it's part of the game. I made a mistake. Now I've just got to move on. It's, it's in the past. And that's the type thing that the great champions are able to do because everybody has little setbacks and hiccups in a 72-hole event. I don't care who you are it's how you respond to that and put it behind you and don't let it affect other things and that's what John Rahm has become now match that with the physical tools that were always there John Rahm can win majors and I expect that to come soon I'll tell you one other thing after making the birdie on 16 he pulled driver on 17 Gary Coke said gosh that fairway bunker is down there on the left he was on a heater and he said I am putting yep. my foot down mm -hmm. he didn't make birdie there that said something to me now for Dustin Johnson yep. off the win you picked him to win I did. and back it up but if, if John Rahm doesn't do what he does, then he goes back to back. But, but is it in a way, the fact that he backed up a 30 under with getting into a playoff with the resistance to par yeah. that that golf course has, in a way, more impressive? Yeah, because it shows DJ can adapt. I mean, he can play he can play birdie ball and he can play major golf uh, par ball, which is what this last week was. Praised by the players. What I love is when you have a setup like this, every player said it's fair. It's ultimate. You hit the good shots, you get rewarded. Yeah. And you know what? Par's a good score. And that's why I hope this course comes back to the U.S. Open rotation because in 2003, it did not play like this. It was wet. It was a very soft golf course in 2003. So this had the fire and the, and the steps that the USGA was probably looking for in 2003. But look at this. He heads into the Tour Championship, Gary, at 10 under. Okay? His last three starts, he's 349 and two. Okay, that he's played, he's beat 349 players and lost to two of them. And he's 10 under par starting the tour championship. When you look at that, that's equivalent to Hussein Bolt starting a 100-yard dash 20 yards ahead of everybody else. Yeah. He's going to be tough to catch. He certainly is. Tiger Woods won the inaugural FedEx Cup in 2007, again in 2009. But he won't be at Eastlake for this year's Tour Championship after a tough week at the BMW Championship. If you look at all four rounds over par in his career, you got to go back a decade to, again, a no-cut event, a World Golf Championship at Firestone. And prior to that, a PGA Championship in 2003, won by Sean McKeel at Oak Hill, Carnoustie in the Open Championship in 99, and then that U.S. Open in 1998, his second U.S. Open as a professional. And speaking of the U.S. Open, the aftermath of this week, Tiger not only talked about Olympia Fields, but the next start. This golf course was was basically a, a, a U.S. Open, uh, with the rough being as, as high as it is and fairways a little bit narrow. Uh, look at the scores, and uh, I don't think that we've seen you know scores like this in a, a non-major in, in a very long time. So uh, this was a, a, a great ramp up for me for the for the U.S. Open. Uh, I wish I was playing next week, but uh, I got a couple weeks off. So seven starts for this season. The first start of the year was back last fall when he won the Zozo. How do you assess the BMW Championship four-round performance? Yeah, I mean, it just he just didn't look 
any kind of momentum carried over. He had a pretty good round, you know, ending up at the uh, the last round he played at the Northern Trust kind of heading in. And I thought, well, well, let's see what happens. And it just never got anything going. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been the story of the year, really. I mean, just kind of stuck in neutral is what I see with Tiger. I see, I see parts of it that look pretty good, but then the rest of it doesn't really mix it all together the way that we know Tiger Woods is capable of doing. So when I look at it, you know, I, I, if there's a positive, you would say, okay, I've got a checklist of things that I need to go and get ready because I just got a U.S. Open test for 72 holes. True. And if he played like that at a U.S. Open, he wouldn't have the 36 holes on the weekend. So at least he had a 72-hole examination, and he's able to get something done in two weeks because he knows at Wingfoot it's going to be probably even harder than what they saw this week. Yeah, you're you're probably right about that. It is time now. As we take a look, uh, one thing to note, because of what transpired this week, you had five players by virtue of Corn Ferry Tour, the Tour Championship, uh, and all the, the movement there that were added. Plus, you had these additional players based on world rankings. So 16 total players have been added to the field of the U.S. Open. There are a couple more spots that will be filled out after the Tour Championship. So these are some of the notables. Uh, Joaquin Neiman making a nice move in the World Golf Rankings by virtue of that performance at the BMW Championship. Lanto Griffin is one of the more underrated stories, I think, of professional golf this year. Uh, he's 31-year-old rookie, won in Houston. He is in the U.S. Open as well. All right, we transition because it is time now for defending the title presented by TaylorMade. And he has a chance to defend his title at the FedEx Cup at the Tour Championship. Now, he won in 16 in a playoff. Last year, playing with Brooks Kepka, he threw that haymaker in that final round and won again. He was set up on the weekend of the BMW Championship, didn't get much out of his rounds. And so he's coming in facing a deficit. And not only is it the strokes of the guy who's leading, it's the firepower and the strokes of the other guys in front of him as well. But also, he's got some distractions. And, For sure. And I think, I think now we understand. And I know, I'm not saying that his uh, stagnant play is due solely sure. to the fact that he's expecting the birth of his first But we have more child. context. We now. have more context. And that, that clearly makes a, a – you kind of look at it and go, well, yeah, probably he's not – he's a little distracted. He's not able to give the full focus that he would normally uh, be able to give the attention to his game. So it's understandable. I, I get that. And, there, look. He's going to play in plenty of tour championships. If he happens to miss this one uh, with the birth of his first uh, child, so be it. I, mm-hmm. I, you know, the, the, those things, as you know, yeah. are, are things you cherish the rest of your life. And he'll he'll cherish the FedEx Cups. And, and who knows, if he does end up playing and does end up having a chance, he's going to have to be a different Roy McIlroy than we've seen post-pandemic. He does. And again, the, the birth of a child and the first child, uh, he does have the additional day this week in terms of the cushion yeah. in, in time. We'll, we'll just have yeah, we'll to have. see.